everyone. Hello, YouTubers. It's been some time since we met, but it's time for another video now. And there's lots of things has happened since uh, last time. Um, well, <laughs> because lots of musicians and artists and singers and whatever who, who we truly admired uh, has passed away since uh, the last video I made in early November. I mean, we've had Leonard Cohen, of course, Sharon Jones, Leon Russell, Greg Lake, and uh, I've been thinking about making uh, particular videos about all these artists that I admire a lot, but I felt this is turning into some sort of obituary <laughs> vlog and I don't really want it to be like that. Uh, but of course, we'll miss them all. And this has been quite an awful year when it comes to many of our musical heroes leaving us. Uh, as you know, I mean, it started with David Bowie and then it's just been going on and on and on. So, enough about that. But, uh, um, I'm really sad about many of these. My, I mean, Leonard Cohen and Sharon Jones. I so hope that she would be able to get better and make more albums because I've just, <laughs> I've just um, discovered her just a couple of years ago. So uh, I've been admiring her so much. So um, yeah, it's it's a great shame and a great pity. And but what can you do other than playing their records and remembering them? Anyway, uh, the music that you heard in the uh, intro here is uh, uh, from this album, Hell Broke Loose in Georgia, on the County label. Uh, it's a New York based label uh, and it's a recording from 1927. It's Fiddlin' John Carson's Virginia Reelers. Uh, Christmas time will soon be over. The <laughs> reason why I chose that, yeah. Okay, today when I record this, it's December 11th, and uh, well, Christmas isn't over yet, but it feels as if, as if it has been going on forever. You know how it is, where they start earlier and earl earlier and earlier every year with the Christmas commercials. Anyway, enough about that. This is um, a record that I bought in uh, um, October on a trip to no sorry late no early november sorry uh, on a trip to umeå uh, a town in northern sweden where i haven't been well i've been there i've been passing there i've been uh, walking from one station to another there before but i haven't really explored that city for well 25 years 1991 when i thought about that well 1991 that's not that long ago yes it is 25 years uh, there's a very nice uh, old record store there that's been there since 1949, if I remember correctly, called Budman's Musik. And I went there and I bought this one and a couple of other records. Uh, I'm not going to show you all that I bought, but I bought this reissue of the Isle Brothers, this old heart of mine. Uh, this is a 50th anniversary reissue um, of the Tamla Motown label. Still, it wasn't perfectly all right to put, put a colored group on front of the record sleeve. Yeah, pathetic, I know, but that's how it was. And then this classic, uh, Steppenwolf, uh, including the hit Born to be Wild on the uh, Dunhill, ABC Dunhill label. This is not a first pressing, I think it's a second uh, one. It's a later pressing anyway, but it's great. Uh, all right, <sighs> I've been buying a lot of records. I've been listening to a lot of records since our last meeting here, but <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of them here, and I hope this video won't be, become too boring. But we're going to start by... Oh, look. Watch yourself there. <laughs> this is um, Dap Tone Gold Volume 2. It's a very nice double album with, uh, uh, well, it's like a sample from the Daptone Records label. You know, I'm very fond of the Daptone 
the records label. And um, of course, before I got this, I knew about Charles Bradley, Sharon Jones, Naomi Shelton. But with the help of this um, album, double album, I've started to look for records by Manahan Street Band, the Sugarman Three, and the Budos Band, and the Como Mamas. Uh, I'm going to get hold of their records sooner or later, but uh, I mean, everything I've heard on this label has been so great. I don't know, don't know why. And, oh, please trust me on this. I'm not sponsored by Daptone Records, but I'm just so nice to find a modern record label that uh, records such good quality music. Uh, on with Dap Tones, the Olympians, uh, instrumental group, uh, a, yeah, a bit like, a bit like the Bar Case or maybe Booker T and the MDs, and that same style, but with more horns, and it's, yeah, very groovy, as they say, the Olympians. And it's on, this is on Dap Tone. Uh, as well and it's I think it's a, this is a fairly new album yeah I think it was fairly new when I got it so get hold of it I can really give my thumbs up to this uh, a couple of years ago the Swedish label Dolores Records made a series of albums uh, called who will buy this uh, wonderful evil four different volumes and now a fifth one has appeared, but it's on, on another label called uh, Wow, Wow Dad, Wow Dad. And it's this one. And it is Beatles in Swedish. And it's a collection with Swedish odd recordings of Beatles songs. And uh, we have Swedish singers like Tony Lindberg, Laila Kinnunen, Carly Tornehave, Doris. Uh, Ulf Brunberg, this, the actor, uh, making a um, Beatles song here, and the groups like Beatmakers, Rusbiggarna, Boforsarna. Not all of it is that brilliant. Some of it is rather awful, to be quite honest. But um, still, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It doesn't compete with original Beatles, of course, and uh, but it's. I think it's great fun, and. Uh, if you're into odd Swedish recordings uh, with Beatles songs, this is probably the record you need to get. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Then we have the Golden Earrings, just earrings. This is uh, music on vinyl reissue of blue vinyl um, of the Golden Earrings, the Dutch rock group, their first album. On this album they were more of a beat uh, beat uh, pop group. Uh, I think this was issued in 1965 originally. Uh, this is a reissue though. Um, and uh, yeah, fairly nice 60s beat music of course, but uh, they would become a bit more interesting when they had their great international breakthrough a couple of years later. Yeah, then I have two albums with Jeff Beck, Jeff Beck, not Beck. Uh, this is a record that was issued this year on Atco, uh, Loud, Hailer. I'm very fond of Jeff Beck, uh, he's one of my favorite guitar players. Not everybody agrees with me that when I think he's superb, but I, I like it because he can change his style into so many different ways and uh, all, to, all in all sounds very good. This was great, great studio album, Loud Hailer, um, with some uh, great vocals by Rosie Bones. And uh, yeah, so yeah, great group here. But I like this even more. This is a triple album, Jeff Beck, performing this week live at Ronnie Scott's. This is a triple album with a great group with one of my favorite young bass players, Tal Wilkenfell. And uh, we have some guest artists like Joss Stone, 
Imogene Heap and Eric Clapton, and also uh, one uh, the last side of this uh, triple album uh, he plays with a group called the Big Town Playboys. And then we, there we, I mean, we have all kinds of stuff here. We have progressive symphonic rock, we have blues, we have a bit of a almost soul style, and also uh, on with the Big Town Playboys we talk about old-fashioned fifties rockabilly. So that shows quite a lot what he can do and what he likes to do. Um, I like this very much. One of the best live albums I've heard for quite a few years. Yeah, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, I have uh, uh, previously showed some of these Ace Records girls compilation album with, uh, well, with French, um, uh, beat girl beat singers and Italian and I think um, is it there Spanish too? Not sure. Uh, I found some more in the same style. This is Love Hit Me, Decca Beat Girls, 1963 to 1970. We've got uh, uh, Billy Davis, of course, The Satin Bells, Julia Smith, Lulu, and um, yeah. Uh, I like the way these records are presented, well it's in beautiful colored vinyl and a good article to read about the artists and the songs and uh, many nice pictures to watch so and of course the recordings themselves I mean those who picked these recordings they knew what they did so very very well done there and here we have another one uh, girls with guitars we have Colette and the bandits the girls, the bees, the ace of cups, also in the same style, very nice. The only thing I don't really like about these are that they are a bit expensive. And the, the, there are the CD versions too, but they they contain much more um, number of tr a greater number of tracks, but I am more fond of, of the vinyl, as you know. And then we have Girl Zone. Uh, Reparat and the Delrons, Darlets, the Drake Sisters, the Angelos, the Cavets, the Iquettes, many others. <laughs> and now there has been an is issue with Swedish beat girls. This looks like this. And it says, the girls want the boys. Sweden's Beat Girls 1966 to 1970 and uh, unlike many of the other compilations I actually know all, all the, the artists on this album. Yeah, no wonder I'm from Sweden and I, I'm quite, I have great interest in Swedish pop. Uh, well we have of course the ABBA singers Agneta Felskog and Anifi Lyngstad, early efforts by them. We have uh, Eleonor Budel who was a big popular um, pop singer in the late 60s. We have the girl group, Marc Lesseur, who they were three girls in that vocal group and they even made an album together. It was not that common back then. We have uh, a bit of an enfant terrible of the 1960s, Lena Yunov. We have the girl, old girl group Plum Mons and the group Plums with the singer Doris, who was also on a solo album, on a solo track here, Doris. I've been talking about her many times before, as being one of the really great uh, Swedish singers in the six, 60s and the uh, well early 70s. And we have Mona Westman. We have the girl duo Bella and Me. We have Britt Bergström, and we have the <laughs> eternally youthful and energetic legend Lil Babs. Uh, yeah, so, and I mean the, the, the songs picked here are very good, some of them I knew about before, some of them I didn't, uh, but altogether it's well worth having if you're into nice Swedish uh, 60s beat pop with, well, mainly sung in Swedish. I'm going to continue with three purchases that I may not really have needed, but still for some reason you cannot have enough of it. I'm talking about the Beatles. I got hold of three 1970s pressing from 
Uh, well, some well, not from the uh, not from UK or not from US or not from Sweden. Uh, this is the Beatles' Greatest Hits Volume Two, and it's from uh, it's an Australian pressing, and it's from the seventies. This, and then we have a version of Help with Le Beatles, Jean-Jean de film Help, Help. Of course, it's a French issue, also from the 70s. And then we have The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night. And this is, uh, unless, um, yeah, it's an Italian issue, so very international trio there. Um, of course, I've got loads of, well, I've, I've, maybe I've five or six different issues of both Help and A Hard Day's Night. Um, but, well, you know what I mean. Okay. Um, this is uh, the new album by the Swedish uh, Hammond organ player, uh, Merit Hemmingsson. She made her record debut back in the early 60s and she made a record that I grew up with in the early 70s. I've been talking about it before, called Huva where she mixes beat music and Swedish folk music in a very groovy kind with lots of Hammond organ and, and yeah. And this is uh, her new album, it's just called Merit and uh, it is in the same style. It's um, folk, Swedish folk music with a jazzy tone maybe um, oh, and lots of Hammond organ and keyboards because she's that's her main instrument. Uh, still going strong. I, you're not supposed to talk about ladies' ages, but uh, she is. I, I think she is uh, same age as Paul Simon, and I don't need to say that much more. And now over to something more for younger, the Gothenburg-based group Vintegata. I don't know if you've seen the, their well, their uh, viral video, The Marble Machine, on YouTube. Well, if you have, you're one among about 30 million people who've seen it. And uh, it was, well, if you don't, well, check for it. Wintergata, The Marble Machine, you'll be amazed. And this is their album, the first album, just called Wintergata from 19... Uh, no, 19, what well, was it? <laughs> from 2013 and it's uh, this I think earlier this year or maybe it was last year it was issued on vinyl as well and this is a very nice clear vinyl copy um, what can you how can you describe this really well I would say if you, if you can think about the Swedish composer Lars Holmer that playfulness of him combined with uh, the in very inventiveness and uh, a bit of a craft work because we have got lots of synthesizers we have um, um, lots of uh, well glockenspiel and they've made these uh, what do you call them these machines that you that play by themselves I don't uh, I can't even remember what it's called. Anyway, it's very inventive and it's also very soothing. Beautiful melodies, beautifully played. I've seen some, um, I've seen some uh, concerts uh, on YouTube where, where they actually are able to recreate the, the music from uh, that they record in the studio in a very good way. And I'm, I, I'm really longing for their second album to be out soon. I know they are, they are working on it after their big hit, The Marble Machine, of course. We want this, another record. Uh, and this is really great. My favorite track on this album is uh, Star Machine 2000. That uh, has uh, like a reggae beat created by an old uh, um, projector. The sound of an old projector, slide projector, and yeah, well, you, we have a video on YouTube with that too. So have a look at it, listen to it. Um, I'm very fond of the Wintergatan. I think they are the most exciting Swedish band that has appeared for the last maybe five years or so. So I'm really looking forward to hear more of this band. Okay, soon finished. 
here we have an album that I've been looking for for well all my life <coughs> well <clears throat> at least 20 years because that's how how long I know that this record has existed it's exception and it's a Dutch group of course have been talking about exception before I grew up with the early exception albums um, they were great big in the late 60s and during the 70s and they made two attempts of comebacks in, in the 80s this was the first one uh, Dance Macabre and they made another album Exception 89 in 1989 I got that uh, album I've been had looked for that album for a long time too I got it I think maybe a year ago two years ago maybe and uh, I didn't really expect that much because I felt okay well, I'm going to try to recreate what was once done and yeah and but actually I found that the exception 89 was very good they had some new ideas and uh, it turned into a very pleasant album this on the other hand <laughs> uh, the big difference before from before is that they have more guitar because uh, they've added uh, the bass player also plays the guitar and it's not core decker yet left by this time uh, but all in all it is more or less all the same same tunes that they had already recorded before once before on the in the 70s and late 60s the fifth symphony italian concerto air rhapsody blue peace planet saber dance um dance macabre and uh, it doesn't really it doesn't really sound that different from the 70s apart from the fact that it has a bit of more 80s sound and they have added more electric guitar but apart from that it's nothing really new here the, I think the best thing with this uh, record is the sleeve with the dancing skeletons here but um, but of course now I have all the albums made by uh, exception this was the only one missing and the one that's been hardest to get hold of but so now that collection is complete anyway okay final some weeks ago it was 40 years since uh, the band played uh, the last waltz record the last waltz at winterland uh, and uh, now we have this new six uh, lp box uh, the last waltz 40th, 40th anniversary great idea i'm very happy about it and uh, this contains well all the material that i guess has been issued during the years not just the original material but also extra tra extra tracks that hasn't been used or uh, until now and these different jams and some uh, oh i'm having this upside some studio ideas and concert rehearsal and stuff and it's a uh, it's a box filled with great music so that's very good and I really welcome this issue but here comes the thing that I have to say but still I'm a bit disappointed and the reason is I don't think it sounds as good as it should sometimes I think this sounds a bit flat I as if you have to like, turn up more bass and start twi twi fiddling with the different uh, sound um, uh, to get a better sound because it sounds a bit flat sometimes not not as you would expect really and I find that a bit of a pity I, I it is great and it's also it costs a bit but uh, somehow I wish it would have sounded a bit better because I've I've heard I mean I've heard the DVD uh, sound before and I know how much they worked on the sound this is I mean it's still great and I'm glad I have it but I wish they had done this a bit better well okay I've been talking now for way too long but I haven't been around for some time um, and uh, unless oh yeah I have one more thing to show uh, I'm a member of the Povel Rammel, the Swedish legend, entertain, entertainment legend. Uh, I'm a member of, his, of the Appreciation Society. And uh, they have a very nice tradition of every year issuing a new CD with odd material that hasn't been uh, published before. Just for the members of the Appreciation Society. And I'm very happy that I got this very nice one thing. 
you can't buy this, buy this in the stores, you have to become a member. And uh, I am, and I'm very happy I got it because it was very nice. So, well, that's about it for now. And unless we meet again, I wish you a Merry Christmas and everything. Okay, so bye for now. Thanks for watching.